TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it? Little warning screen. Because we never know what this particular show has in mind store for us, man. Don't forget, um, we are on Twitch.com. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. That's where you catch any live streams. And don't forget, I do got a Twitter account. I feel like Facebook be doing a lot, so I'm going to Twitter with mine. <laughs> so if you want to connect with me on Twitter, now you can send me stuff that's out, and I can just, boom, react. I see it all. Bob, react, react, react. <laughs> I like how that's going to feel for me. Pause. Uh, it's the lit one. T-H-E-E underscore L-I-T underscore O-N-E, or just T-L-O, you know. You figure it out. Uh, this is Police Interceptors. I don't know what season, I don't know what episode. Let's just get into it, man. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Don't forget we got Patreon as well, man. Link to all of that is in the description. I'm glad we got police interceptors back, man. Interceptors are after two runaways from a suspected clone fiesta. They failed to stop. Welcome back, Lisa. Where you been? Oh, we got HD too? Oh, yeah. Give me the 1080p premium. I pay for it. I want it. Crash. Stacked into a roundabout and legged it into the pitch black. Which way they go? That way. Get it contained. They're believed to have gone to ground in a muddy field. They're in here. But the dogs are out. Oh. And PD Morse has picked up a scent along the canal. I see multiple dogs too. When there's more, where there's more than one dog, are oh, you in trouble? Because they 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 move better in packs. Ow. Ah! Ah! Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah! Whoever it is, he picked the wrong opponent for hide and seek. Ah, yo! Ah, yo! It's ripping my skin. Yo. <laughs> yeah, got that ASS, don't it? Yeah. That was a polite way to say it. It's nipping my skin. Yeah, it's getting your, it's biting. It's tough out there, ain't it? Look it off, please. Morse is a master seeker with massive teeth. <laughs> yeah, I'll take one. I've got him. Morse seems to like him. But the Mars got blood on his tooth. I see the feeling it. clearly is a mutual. Come down the canal, pal. Back up arrives. Going out there, mate. Bro had a mouthful. Didn't we seen him on the last episode. This dog. It's a bit of a prickly situation. What's your name? Uh, it's been built on his right leg. Kneel down, kneel down. Kneel down. Okay. Come behind your back. The lad's going in cuffs. Uh, my leg's bleeding, boys. Uh, that? Yeah, yo. Is that it? Yo, it's stinking. Are you mad? Is that it? Come on, man. Patting up. That's blood, in it? No, that's oh. like a cat scratch. Brother. I'm really thinking you have real pain going on. I don't know why the dog's mouth is so bloody. This is nothing. Morse has left an impression, but it's not serious. Oh, that's stinging, that. You've got some lethal business. Bro, limping and everything, talking about lethal business. Man, take the tracksuit off if that's how you're acting. And the lad seems keen on a post-chase interview. No, I did. I thought I was blending at the end, and I had seen the dog, and then I just felt some <laughs> biting, and then it went... I thought, oh shit, I fed it. I thought I smoked it, I can't lie, like, I was running over. I thought he was on Fox F1, like, nobody cared. With a bare field, I thought I got away. Despite a thorough search, the other occupant of the car seems to have slipped the net. 
So there won't be any seconds for Morse this time. He pee on himself? Time, man. I just come to show. You're all right? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, that dog's lethal shit, you know. Where was you, man? I was next to him. It seems the suspect is a familiar face. Oh, what's popping, mate? I remember you. Do you have a nice little run out? Yeah. From your stolen car. It's not stolen. Lisa's my idol. Look at her chilling, hands in pocket. Everybody got their hands in pocket, but it just it hit different when Lisa got hands in pocket because we know she worked hard today. Man, is it not? Have you done a VIN check yet? Well, I might find some of the other oh, stolen so cars. You, so you know the, the car we're on about then? I don't know, nothing. Oh, no. <laughs> he denies being in the car. And cops are desperate to prove he was. Yeah, we've been after him for a while, to be fair. He's, there's, there's, there's a good intelligence picture around him being a decent car key burger and nicking sort of high value, decent German cars, Beamers and Audis. We've been after him for a while. He's been flicking in and out of cars on false plates. So, yeah, really, really good results lock him up. No one claimed ownership of the Fiesta, so it was later destroyed. However, this time, due to evidential difficulties, no further action was taken. Simple, buddy ran, got bit by the dog, but that can't prove you was in there. Is this snow? Where are we? But a few weeks later... Yeah, air priority, please. Vehicle's now making off from us. It's uh, Leepool Island. The boy from the bush is believed to be back on the road in a suspected stolen mini that's failed to stop on treacherous icy roads. And it's the first, the first, still A60 now, in towards Arnold. The yeah, is medium due to the speed of the vehicle, but traffic is light. Despite the roads being like an ice rink, the Mini is maxing it at over 80 miles an hour. It's uh, underneath Archville, descending... Yeah, buddy taking real chances. Arnold, still failing to stop. The cops suspect that both occupants have been up to no good. Brody's going 80 miles an hour on a set of Frozen 2. Look at this. And they're determined to collar them before someone gets hurt. The R8 is medium. It's uh, approaching the line. Them before someone gets hurt. The R8 is medium. Is this called the Ram Inn? Yeah. It's uh, approaching the lights for Mellor's Road. It's through on red. Still A60 inbound. The road conditions are hazardous. But the cops are in a high-performance X5 and trained to drive on the snow and ice. DRA remains medium due to speed of 8-0. Whereas this guy's driving is worse than the weather. <coughs> Passing the cemetery to the offside, approaching the traffic lights with... I don't understand how the risk factor is medium. It's rain. It's, snow, it's raining, it's sleet, it's snow, there's heavy... There's, there's medium traffic, but like... I feel like y'all should fall back, right? Cross street. And it's wrong side of the road and wrong side of the road again for a right, right, right onto Oxglose Lane. Wrong side of the road. The driver is prepared to do anything to escape as he nearly takes out the police car. DRA is. Uh, Don't these minis got uh, turbos on them too? Medium. Thinks of it being wrong side of the road, but traffic is light. Driver is a white male with dark cropped hair. They need to get these guys stopped before they kill someone. Left, 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 Roundwood Road. We are a medium. Uh, road conditions quite slippery road. here. They're trying to make tactical contact with you. You you turned on a quiet road with no with no cars. You're getting tactically touched in a minute. Pause. We are a medium. The runaways are on thin ice, and with freedom slipping away, they prepare to bail out. And it's uh, right, right, right into Warren Hill. Close. Tactical contact. Tactical contact again into Warren Hill. Close for a decamp. They're both out to the driver's side, leaving the Mini to slam into a parked car. They're out and running down towards. But there's no dark field for cover this time, and they've left a handy trail of footprints in the snow. They're up, they're up, up, up over the playground. Someone's hiding between the houses, and it's not Frosty the Snowman. <laughs> oh, we're out, we're out, we're out. We're out, we're out. Get on the floor! Oh, you're Nick, mate. 
to the team. It's Matt Olaf. They've also got his buddy, who appears to be the same lad Morse found in the bush. I'm only is old. Well known burglar. Bro got blessed with busting the case and came back for round two. Well, was not satisfied. Really? This colour's especially sweet, and it's a miracle no one got hurt. The Mini was completely out of control, nearly hitting a bloke walking his dog. Tactical contact again into Warren Hill close for a decamp. This slippery pair risked their lives to escape, but had a snowball's chance in hell. This would piss me off. Out of all cars on the block, you hit mine. You decide to decamp and, and ghost ride the whip into my little car. This is why I don't park right there. Like when this is street, like a T street, like 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 this. I'm not parking right here. I'm not parking right on the street because you never know when it's a high speed chase about to take <laughs> take place. Oh. So these officers are abusing a young kid. I'm only it's old. Well known I'm only The driver is awaiting a charging decision for dangerous driving. No action was taken against the lad who ended up in the jaws of Morse. You can get up. Oi! Oi! He beat the case three times, two times. Get off the floor. Get off the bro. Get off! Hey, I'll swing you around. On the floor. No, on the floor! floor. Larry customers on the ground can be difficult enough to deal get with. Get off her. Get off Y'all remember that episode? I remember that one. But when they take to the rooftops with their grievances... I let you people at these stations and chop people off. They reach a whole new level of grief. Got good aim. So when we get people that go on the roof trying to escape or potentially trying to arm themselves, it becomes quite a difficult situation. We've had it previously where they've had um, used the tiles as missiles, um, used other implements, such as we had one where we, where we uh, had two lads go on a roof a couple of years ago and they even pushed the chimney stack over um, and tried to push that onto police officers. Obviously, that's hundreds of bricks. Hun they're uh, using bricks as missiles. They, they did cause a huge amount of damage to people's property. They wrote off cars. They just spent several hours targeting police officers by chucking bricks at them. Uh, they ultimately, negotiators were used and they um, came down for a bucket of uh, KFC, I think it was, if I remember right. Bro was up there throwing bricks, causing all type of diabolical damage, and, and you came down for a family bucket of, of chicken? And KFC at that? It couldn't even, you couldn't even step up your game or nothing. That's crazy. She might not be armed with fried chicken, but Jen Els does have a very persuasive dog called Quantum. They're en route to Mansfield, to help with a high pressure situation. It's a siege, it's been going on, I think, for an hour or so. That's crazy. Wow. Um, a yeah, male, I think, that thought he was wanted. We've checked and we don't think he's wanted, but he's gone up on a roof and is throwing objects off the roof at cops, uh, damaging houses, damaging cars, and just causing basically mayhem. <coughs> So who pays for this? The drone stuff? team has eyes on the bloke who scaled an old bus depot and is making unauthorized alterations to the roof. So does the city pay for this? Like the damages to the roof, the damages to the cars. Causing a lot of damage, I think, by the size of it. They arrive on scene. <laughs> What quantum is going to be? Where is he? Diagonally across from the building. Right. I think there's a dog man over the side. Here, yeah. Jen and Quantum's role will be to apprehend the high flyer if he makes a break for it on the ground. But he's going nowhere. And there's been an alarming development. Yeah, it's threatening to set fire. The suspects threaten to set the building ablaze, which, considering he's on it, isn't the brightest idea. And, worryingly, he's now disappeared from sight. Up, 
After a tense couple of minutes, mercifully without smoke, he's back on the tiles for a life-threatening stroll. More than 40 feet above the ground, one slip on a loose slate could be. But he's got his own plans for loose slates, and they're not good. See what I'm saying? Like, now I gotta call my insurance and tell them a crazy man was throwing roof pieces off of an abandoned building. You know, they're gonna look at me like, brother. As long as there's a police report, though, they should cover it, though. Broken windscreens can be repaired. But now he switches his aim from cars to coppers. A good shot, you know. An object thrown from this height could kill someone. They're gonna get the beanbag gun in a minute. The beanbag cannon. If this was America, I don't believe Buddy would have made it off this roof <laughs> as a part of the world anymore. But the UK is highly trained and better sensitive to stuff like this, better suited to deal with stuff like this. How's he managed that? Just hurling stuff, mate. Right? Pinged off the trees into the van. The rowdy roofer's arming himself with some seriously hefty masonry. I'll stand it. Watch out. Fortunately, it's another near miss. However, the man's behaviour is increasingly erratic. Working at the dog? What is he? I show speed? I'm fine! Get off here! Negotiators are on scene and are trying to persuade him down. But they're not having much luck. He now picks a fight with around 20 cops. He's now been up there for over three hours and doesn't show any signs of tiring. Yeah, class A's can keep you up for a long time. So they decide to move in by entering a neighboring property to get access to the roof. Bring that red key in here. Red key in here. But he's seen them coming. It looks like he's cut his hand, most likely ripping up roof tiles to throw at the cops below. The police's priority is his well being, despite his continued threats towards them. You're gonna need a hepatitis B shot. Look, your hands are dirty, like, and then you got a cut you from, from roof tile and all type of stuff. I'm unique. He might be special, but his bleeding hand is causing concern. This is my barrister. Hey, we didn't. Bro said I'm special. Education. In a bid to appeal to his better nature, one of the negotiators throws up a bandage. Luckily, his catching is better than his attitude. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. The siege is now entering its fourth hour, and it's been a significant police response. It's a lot of cost to, to the public, isn't it? Taxpayers' money. There's, there's quite a few police officers here. There's, uh... I mean, y'all was on duty anyway not doing nothing so you might as well have came here because this is not like a, a cold blah 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 all officers on deck type situation y'all just 
not doing nothing and decided to come. <laughs> uh, specialist officers that are there to enforce and go in with shields and helmets. So you've got, you've got two teams of those. You did have two dogs, yeah. now one dog. Helicopter's been the drone. It's incredibly expensive. It's yeah, and it's just a matter of waiting it out. If not, and Maybe the helicopter caused gas. Five hours after he went up, the negotiators finally persuade him down. <laughs> It's been a great team effort, and the suspect escaped only with a minor injury, which is more than can be said for the destruction he's left on the street. Yeah, what kind of fine did he get? <laughs> the roof wrecker was found guilty of criminal damage, of fray, and failing to surrender. He was handed a 20 month prison sentence, suspended for two years. 20 months, so he got. I mean, he shouldn't get time for this, though. If we being real, he might need some, like, therapy or something, though. For sure. It's Hunt the Quad in Newark. Do it. Ah. Yeah, like rehab or something. Radford. After some recent drug-related fatalities in Nottingham, the knife crime team has been tasked with targeting users and dealers. Sergeant Matt Daly and Dan Mottishaw are out in Radford, where the team have two suspected drug users under observation. Gav has seen uh, two people, a male and a female, um, who seem to be on a little bit of a mission the way <coughs> they're walking. Uh, I'm just coming up to the Tesco's now, Gav, uh, you want me to go down? He suspects yep, that they might be going to try and score some drugs and on I think it was Tuesday of this week we had a drug dealer stopped in the area where they're approaching now on that particular occasion uh, he had no drugs on him and it's clear that he had just dealt so we're hoping to have another bite at the cherry Plainclothes cops have eyes on the suspect pair just around the corner. They're monitoring at the side. I'll see them when they come back out. Yeah, 10 Obviously, they're probably going to be using with the dealer. When I go to the UK, I'm going to go to the police station and ask, like, hey, can I, get a, can I do a ride along? I'm going to try to record it. <laughs> The female has been spotted quickly entering and leaving a property. She's passed a small package to the bloke and the pair are on the move. So are the team. Just turning it now. He's just gobbed it. Eagle-eyed Dan spots the lad put something in his mouth. And it doesn't look like a lollipop. No, man. No, man. Stay there for us, brother. Get it out stay, there. stay there. Stay there. Get it out. Don't let him swallow it. Get it out your oh, mouth. Oh, yo, get off him, man. No, allow it. We're trying to help him. We don't want to swallow anything. Mate, if What's you your swallow name, it. Just stand. No, just don't listen. Do listen. Name. Oh, you're gonna, allow it. You're going to need a doctor if you swallow it. Get it out your mouth. Just stand there. Do not swallow a load of drugs. Don't swallow a load of drugs. Whatever's in his gob, he's not keen on sharing. Oh, they're young too. Oh my God, get off him, lad! Stay there, stay there, stay there. You mad? Out your mouth, mate. Stay there, but you got to finish the gun. Don't be silly enough to swallow a load of drugs. Despite best efforts, he's trying to swallow suspected cannabis, and he's pleased with himself. Free man, lad! I ain't got a chance here. I ain't got no drugs. What is the zeal on about, mate? Right. What drugs are you on about? He's gonna need searching anyway. What drugs are you on about? Drugs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they doing all of this for kit. Okay, I understand, but if Bro can put cannabis in his mouth and swallow it, it had to be less than a dime bag or less than a twenty or something like that. Like, find me. <laughs> you are funny, man. Thank Unfortunately, they can't search his stomach, but they'll give him the once-over. You're not just causing a scene, man. I ain't got nothing coming in it. So you may as well just let me walk. 
Thanks. Still ruins your day, though, isn't it? And he's clean on the outside, but the primary concern is for his health. My advice is that you take yourself to hospital, all right? Oh, my feet. No high for you pair today, is there? See ya. Well, actually, studies have shown, officer, if you, you know what? I'm not even gonna explain it. If you know, you know. Knife Crime Team Sergeant Matt's a big U2 fan, and he still hasn't found what he's looking for. And the team's focus switches to the suspected dealer. What do you want to do? Go around? Yeah. Well, she's been in there. We can confirm it, can't we? We've got enough suspicion. Yeah. It's time for a surprise house call at the address from which the lad and friend emerged. Oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'll get straight to the point. Right, I'm going to keep this dead simple, OK? We have some suspicion that somebody... Why did they let him in? ...at this address has just supplied a male and a female with some canvas. Yeah. Got any drugs in here? <coughs> <coughs> no, yeah, okay, I'm in time. You're under arrest on suspicion of being concerned in the supply of <laughs> canvas. You don't have to say it. It may harm friends. Don't mention one question. Some which later I report anything you do say you may give evidence. He's denied having any drugs, but then they always do. So if they just knocked on his door randomly, did they have to? He didn't have to answer this door, did he? Something just uh, instead of if, you know, if there is something here, rather just, just find it's a like ripping yeah, everything yeah, apart. The only thing what you would find is probably my grind or ashtray, that's it. Man. Yeah, but that isn't it. Um, this uh, shoebox was just down here on the floor, just opened it up, and there's a couple of bags of weed in it, canvas, probably a half ounce right there, 14 grams, and then uh, an ounce right there. Gav also finds a nasty looking weapon. <laughs> <coughs> That's the same blade they had in Mortal Kombat, ain't it? It's a day item you keep in the bedroom. It's not particularly sharp, but... It's still going to cause a serious injury. Death if someone stabs you in. Aladdin's blade isn't the only knife in the house. Why <laughs> you say Aladdin's blade? Oh, man. What you normally keep in your bed, ain't it? Safest place to keep it. <laughs> But there's an even more disturbing discovery. Well, an imitation firearm. Yeah, that's Broad obviously not real. There's not. I didn't. For, first and foremost, the only thing that's illegal, right, is the rep, the the, the uh, Aladdin's blade. No, is that even illegal? Is if it's in your house? Don't you have to be outside with it? Maybe just the Aladdin's blade is illegal because it's like specialty order, but the kitchen knife, man, I was eating a steak. I forgot to put it in the back kitchen. <laughs> and this replica firearm? So? All intents and purposes. Um, hidden in a shoebox, as, as you would expect. It's got some right weight to it. I think it's going to be a pellet gun. Which is Gas not illegal. pellet gun. Um, there's going to be no good reason for why he's got it. The team also finds some scales. But with what the scales got to do with anything? I'm counting my protein intake. I can only eat eight ounces of chicken per meal. Only around an ounce of cannabis found. It will be a possession rather than a dealing charge. Um, Someone's going to need a quick interview for possession of cannabis. Who's that going to be? Me. You. Yeah. It's still a good result for the knife crime team, with drugs confiscated and weapons seized. I'm blurring yeah, You don't cut your fruit and veg with it. I'm not convinced it's going to be put to any good use in their possession, so it'll come away with us. Our statistics show that actually those that carry knives for self-protection are far more likely to be injured or injure someone else carrying knives than those that just don't carry in the first place. You know, some of it is sort of education, but we have a lot of slow learners. The young lad in the house was given a cannabis warning. No further action was taken in respect to the lady in the house. 
So I blurred out. I knew they couldn't charge him for any of that other stuff. Well, it's not, you can't even connect nothing to it. I'm on a sheesh diet. I'm in a strict diet. Quads and motorbikes are an increasing nuisance for the interceptors. They're tricky to pursue and there's an inherent danger as riders are often completely unprotected. They get used in general antisocial behaviour on the road where people are just flying around on them. Um, and they do quite often get used by criminals when they're out committing offences. I think they're handy for them because they're also small enough to duck down alleyways and walkways that we just can't get down in cars. You know, if someone's making off from us on a quad bike, we'll, we'll go after it, but then ultimately it's a decision for the bosses to make as to whether we are going to pursue it or not. It's just a handy little tactic for them to get away. We've got a red quad bike on Lover's Lane um, up Newick side. that's there. Previously failed to stop for officers and it's done the same again tonight. We've got no VRM You're able to travel that area. In the unmarked X5 and looking to end this quad riders joyride this evening are Paul Charlesworth and Rich Elliott. At the minute we're looking for a, a red quad in the Newark area. It's driving in uh, quite an antisocial manner. Two riders on it, neither of which have got helmet, and we're more concerned really for their safety at the minute. Unlike them, who are breaking every rule of the road. Right. There you go. That quad way, right? just uh, done a red light on the wrong side of the road on London Road, and uh, we're in an unmarked car. Due to the risks involved, the team can't follow until tactics are authorised from control. Good. Can we ask for preemptive yeah, sting right. on this quad? It's gone wrong side of the road through a red. I mean, it could Three end up in RTC just at, without its driving already. Go ahead. He got a good head start. Across town and keeping ears on the job are Sergeant Jim and Lisa DeSantis. <laughs> okay, Lisa's riding passenger today, okay. She'd normally be driving, so this is her time to hop out and chase some down. Sting would be an option, wouldn't it? Finally, control gives the green light. So, preemptive stinger and tactics around TPAC is authorised. So, um, we can uh, set up. Lisa, on it don't bite your nails. And potentially put a stinger on it in order to uh, slow the vehicle down, bring it to a conclusion. Meanwhile, I'm, Paul. I'm genuinely convinced Lisa be watching. There's no way that she's biting her nails right now. Rich. So, we're going to try and plot up and sting it if we can. Need to predict where their rogue quad is going. But the two times we've seen it, it could have easily been going back towards Tony Lane and it's not bothered, it's just thrashing it around for the sake of it. Cover from With the quads. Tony Lane and it's not bothered, it's just thrashing it around for the sake of it. Is that a Porsche? What is Cover that? GT3? What is that? Oh, With the quad seemingly on a mindless joyride, they make an educated guess. Also we'll been around to get a stinger set up, set up in the town centre. Before they can spin round, the joyride comes their way. He says, he's coming back, he's coming back. Back towards us now, mate. They may have missed the chance to sting it. Uh, back to the roundabout, towards you. But there are other dogs in this fight. Paul the marshals the team one? to set stingers along the quad's likely route. We've just arrived at the top. We've come from the uh, Castlegate uh, area. Got a turn. Stinger out for the arm mark, can't. Yeah. It's only quite and it's not going to yeah, go through well, the car. Well, I've got the path here if it comes down here. Yeah. With the X5 blocking the footpath across the bridge, they set up a spiky surprise. Rich is an ex-intelligence analyst who's new to the team and yet to pop his stinger cherry. He's hoping to open his account with a quad. <laughs> but it's not to be. The riders have been spotted ditching the quad in some woods nearby. There's a runner, I think it's been decamped in the woodlands, runner towards Tony Lane. 
uh, back towards where the OS offices are on Shenbridge. It's now a foot race in the woods, with cops hot on the heels of one of the suspects. They are in no rush. As Rich and Paul race to intercept, Lisa and Jim are zeroing in on the chase. Yeah, he's down here. Keep going. Keep going. I know where the bridge is. What you doing, Lisa? <laughs> Why is your hand on your seatbelt? What you about to do? Yeah, down here. Yeah, we're done. They're just in time. We're gonna. Oh. There you go, Lisa. Get them. Pastors. Other interceptors are close by. His joyride and fun run are over. We've got the time. <laughs> but he denies being the rider. I don't like liars. CCTV's watched you. Several police officers have watched you. Don't take me for an idiot. No, I'm not taking you for an idiot. Okay, but where's Lisa? Jim gives him a piece of his mind. Mate, riding quads like that kills people. How uh, busy is it around here with pedestrians and kids at the weekend? I fully understand, mate. Yeah? That's how people die, mate. It's people like us that have to come and scoop up people's brains off the roads. Mate, I'm only, please don't scream and shout me, please. I'm just asking nicely. I understand what I've done. You're wrong. asking nicely now? I understand what after I've done. After riding a quad like that? I understand what I've done. I'm not interested, mate. As Paul arrives, the lad's led off, but he's made his mark. Where's Lisa? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's run so hard, uh, he's been sick on the floor. Uh, he's a teenager, riding around like an idiot. He's just got no sense of consequences, I don't think. Because um, anyone with any rational thought wouldn't just go through a red light on a quad bike uh, and risk their own life, so... Lisa ran for two minutes and had to sit out the rest of the, the, rest of the scene. That's what is going on? The fact he's 16 probably contributes to the fact, uh, to the nature of how he's riding, because he just doesn't doesn't recognise the consequence of what he's doing. Um, hopefully, he'll learn a little bit and maybe think twice about it next time. With the menace off the road... Yeah, that is progress, though. Salute, Lisa. This is the first time i ever seen you unbuckle your seatbelt and open the door and take fast steps. It falls to Rich to recover the abandoned <coughs> quad from the woods. So at least we've got the quad, we've got the rider, so it's a good result really. Um, I'm sure it won't be uh, insured. They're not really designed for the roads and the speeds he was doing. This is a, it's a farm vehicle. It's made to be, um, you know, driven sensibly around farms, sorting out. That's not, tr that's not true. This is not true. Where do these people be getting their information from? They just be making stuff up. What are you talking about? A quad bike? Yes, they can be used for farms, but... Out animals and livestock. What he was using it for is just ridiculous, really. He's only going to hurt himself, and he had no concept of danger. He was going through red lights, wrong way around roundabout. He was just um, completely reckless and dangerous. The teenager with the weak stomach was charged with owning a false driver's license, but received no further court action. Laugh for what? Y'all make Lisa jump out that seat and, and chase something down for, for, for nothing. Insane. Oh, here she go. Here she go. Reckless youngsters without driving licenses are accidents waiting to happen. High risk, high risk, high risk. With a lethal combination of overconfidence and inexperience. Crash, crash, crash. Get ready to get out. From a police perspective, a lot of the young drivers that we deal with have got no real 
uh, consideration for experience. Those that do have a license think the Lewis Hamilton, but it is uh, yeah, it is certainly a, an increasing problem for us old. It's a warm afternoon as Phil Broughton starts a sunny shift in the Mark V series. But a cloud soon falls over proceedings in the form of a Mercedes compressor that's four up. The Merc was motoring. Quick. Time for a chat. Hello, how are you? Hello, not bad, you? Yeah, good, thank you. Just turn your ignition off for us a sec. There we go. Is it your vehicle? My dad's. She does, is it? OK. The reason why I want to have a chat with you is how you're coming up Glenside. You're going a bit too quick. Yeah. I have like 35 miles per hour, that's 35 it. 35 miles an hour, yeah, but it's a 30 mile an hour limit. <laughs> really? I remember when I was on the highway one time and the speed limit was 55. No, it was, I was on the interstate, it was 65. And I was going 67 and got, it t got pulled over. And he was like, yeah, we clocked you at 67. I had to look around, I was, what are you, the speed limit is 65. He was... Exactly. You're going two miles hours. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> OK. It's not often you get a driver who grasses himself up for speeding. Are you sure to drive it? Uh, no. I've got an L driving licence. Yeah, what, sorry? That's it. I've got L driving licence. You've got provisional, have you? Yeah, yeah. All ah, right. No worries. Right. Do you want to step out for us? Have you got your licence on you? Uh, no. No. All right. Just step out for us. I haven't got anything on. you got a licence? No. <laughs> you want me to be 15? Come on, man. It's 15? How old are you? 15. I'm 16 and a half. Right. OK, then. So, ultimately, then... He claims to have a provisional, but he's too young to hold one. And there's another issue closer to home. Question is, does your dad know you got a car? No. Right. No. OK, where's your my key? He doesn't know. He doesn't know you got it? No. Take it to oh, my car. My dad is going to kill me now. Yeah, yeah, it's over, buddy. It's over. Just be patient. <laughs> the car don't go nowhere. Just be patient. He told you not to drive it, so you did? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to be dead. Sorry. With road traffic accidents being the main cause of death in young people aged between 15 to 29, it's a good job Phil stopped him. Side note, I've never told anybody I'm X amount of years old and a half and a quarter or anything like that. I'm the year and that's it. Mm -hmm. In no trade on a PNC name check or a uh, PNC uh, DL check. Are you sure you got a provisional? Are you applied for a provisional license? I was applied, yeah. Oh, you haven't applied yet? No. No license, no insurance. Your application may be delayed after today. Then you're going to get your dad's car towed. The offences you've committed driving wise, it's highly likely you're going to be uh, disqualified from driving for a period of time. He could be in further trouble. Just for info, uh, I've got 16 year old son who's taken dad's car. I just need to make contact with dad. So it might be a case that he's not aware that he's taken it. If dad hasn't given him permission, he could also be facing taking a vehicle without consent. Dad's English uh, okay? No. It's not. Oh. I can ring him and talk. I'll, I'm, I'm going to try and ring him now. We'll see where we get and then we'll, we'll take it from there. All right. Son trying to ring him first, like, hey, Dad, tell him out there, tell him you know. This could be one awkward phone call for the lad. Hello, Zach. Hello, it's PC Broughton from Nottinghamshire Police. I'm currently with your son. What's up with him? Um, why is he out in your Mercedes? Has he got permission to drive it? Has he got permission to drive your Mercedes? No. OK. Oh, dear. The dad's on his way down to collect the car, but this is a family reunion the son isn't exactly looking forward to. I'll see you shortly. Bye-bye. No worries. Bye-bye. I can't believe you can't, you can't realise what you've done is wrong. The fact is you're driving around with a load of kids in the car. You can't drive, you ain't got a licence. How do you think it's going to end? 
Fortunately, this time no one's been hurt, and Phil. Wait, there's more than one other person in the car. It's a copper who always seeks the positive. Thing is, though, I'm open. At least after this, you won't do it again. I won't. Good. Thirty percent is just because like police in that, but trust me, seventy is just because my dad. <laughs> and he's one hundred percent going to be grounded, as he's. <laughs> And he's 100% going to be grounded as his dad arrives. Obviously, he shouldn't be driving. We all know he shouldn't be driving. He ain't got a licence, he's got no insurance, and he's got uh, three of his mates in the car as well that has been driving around. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I take he's not got permission to drive it? No. No. No, no. All right. No, no. But he needs to be interviewed regarding some offences. So, taking the vehicle without your consent, so without your knowledge, driving otherwise in accordance with a licence and driving without insurance, but I need to do that with an inappropriate adult at a convenient time. So I'm going to get his friends out of the car unless you want to drop them off home. Ah, oh, OK, no problem. Are you happy to drop them off? Yeah. Right. He's going to curse them out. Cool. Right, bear in mind what we've said and don't do anything like that again. All right? Come on, man. It's fair to say he probably won't. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. No worries, no problem. Uh, maybe something good. Uh, something uh, big problem. That's it, yeah. We've stopped it before happening. This, this is. Thank you so much. <laughs> Not a so problem. Much. All right, have Thank a good day. I appreciate it. All right, no Thank worries. So Not a problem. Have a easy day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a lesson learned, and there's one thing left for the lad to do. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. I said, as long as it doesn't happen again, as long as we learn from it, cracking. I mean, yeah, I mean, like I say, he's got no training on how to drive a car or whatever. He might think he can drive a car, but he's not passed a test. Um, I just don't think he's got an idea of the consequences behind it. So um, he'll be egged on by his friends or what have you, out and about. They think it's a joke until something happens in front of him they just, and right, they can't react to right. it. No charges were brought for taking a vehicle without consent. I ain't never even thought about taking my mom's car without her permission. That has never crossed my mind. He'll either wait to stay in court for driving without insurance or a license. It was never that type of serious for me. You feel me? Tell a little leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, and go.